those gates. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at a tank some of you may be familiar with and others may have never heard of before. This tank is the Lerva. And this was a pretty fun game that I had in World of Tanks. It's not the greatest Lerva game out there. I'm sure you can go find ones that are three or four times the amount of damage I did here with way more impressive stuff. But this was just a very, very fun match that I had that I think shows off the capabilities of this tank. And I know a lot of you probably have never even heard of this tank before, so we're going to kind of talk about it a little bit while uh, this battle progresses in between the bits of action. But before we get into that, what I was doing here is kind of moving up over near this VK. I wanted to get into these bushes to stop the um, advance through this valley because being a tier 8 game, I knew that whatever tier 8s they had were likely to come over here. I just wanted to kind of push through this flank and uh, I'm able to actually catch a shot into this T-103. The very strange looking, it's kind of like an SU-100Y with a turret. I think that's actually basically exactly what it is. But regardless, what is this tank and how does it perform in World of Tanks? Well, this tank is essentially part of the program that led up to the mouse, but not exactly. It was another heavy tank project that was being worked on that was eventually replaced by the mouse as the mouse was a lot more promising in terms of uh, design than this was. This tank weighs around 100 tons, so it's not quite as new of a product, not quite as modern of a project, not product, as the mouse, so to speak, because the mouse obviously came after this. This was in a whole line of projects that were uh, worked on in the German heavy tank design bureau during the war. And I believe it mounts a 128 millimeter cannon, just like on the mouse. I will uh, put that up on the screen if I'm incorrect. I'm fairly certain I'm uh, correct on that. But regardless of what it was in real life, how does it perform in game? Well, it is your typical German heavy tank, really. It has a pretty decent gun. I know this thing got some buffs a little while back, but it has quite good fire rate. It's very accurate as I miss a shot, but it's quite accurate. I'm not running the best equipment on this because they just swapped over all the equipment to the new system, so I haven't had the money to be able to buy new equipment. I've been working my way up on that, and this was while I was grinding silver to unlock my mouse, which you will see later on in this. I have a replay I'm going to feature of that as well, because this is a kind of short game. But let's get back to the battle before uh, we get too distracted. So. I pushed up after the T-103 was knocked out, and now I've sort of gotten myself into a little bit of a pickle. That Nazhorn over there, ooh, a little bit of lag there. That Nazhorn over there is going to cause me some considerable issues, because he can most likely pen me fairly easily through the lower plate, which is a quite large target on this tank. Or I believe even the turret, there's some weak spots on that. So I pull back and I get behind this ridge. Now I'm you'll see me try to ping this guy over here, this VK. The guy's on full health, and he's in a top tier engagement, and I'm trying to say, hey man, like, come help me, we can push through this. And he just sort of chills back there, but you'll see the T28 prototype will start to move up, thankfully taking the initiative, because I would have easily pushed up by myself, but as with uh, a lot of online games, if you try to push up by yourself in World of Tanks, it's likely that your teammates are just going to sit back watching you with their uh, hands kind of underneath their legs, watching you drive up and take hit after hit after hit, and then you'll die, and they'll be like, well, all right, who's next? We're just going to, you know, wait for everyone to go single file and get focused. But regardless, the T-28 moves up, which I take as uh, a good chance to kind of start peeking up. I'm just waiting for him to get into position because he can get up there and eventually proxy spot the Nazhorn is what I was hoping, and also that T-3045 who uh, decided to try to shoot me with HE. I guess he just figured he couldn't pen me with uh, standard rounds, which is probably pretty likely, but I'm able to get, I believe I get two shots into him, and I'm just kind of waiting on that 
on him to peek out again. Maybe it was just the one shot. And uh, I'm waiting for him to peek out again, but he's very firmly planted behind that rock and he ends up just getting bonked and then the T-28 goes around and finishes him off. Unfortunately though, the T-28 gets clicked by the artillery, so I am once again left by myself. Thankfully, the VK finally found his uh, balls and he's moving up. And the Jagdpanzer IV just kind of heads towards the middle. I think he was trying to get up onto that ridge line. But now, I just sort of pushed forward because I knew that it was pretty unlikely that anyone else was going to. And if I pushed, I was hoping the VK would follow me. I wanted to really push up and root out this Nazhorn and then eventually push up and knock out the artillery, which I do spot one of them, put one shot into him, and the uh, the alpha damage on this gun is a little bit leaving some to be desired, so I just sort of uh, pop one at him and left him for someone else to finish off. And it looks like with that shot I may have actually critted the Nazhorn's gun maybe, or at least critted his uh, one of his crew members, so that was pretty good. He ends up getting finished off, and I should have pushed up behind this building because I took two hits from that T25 too, which shave off a good amount of my hit points and put me into one-shot range for basically anything. But we finally spot the M44. I think it was the VK that may have spotted him, or maybe the maybe even the Fury. I, no, I don't think it was the Fury. But we see the M44 running along. He gets behind cover, but he's going to get knocked out. There's no way he's getting away. So I'm trying to push up and keep these buildings in between me and the T-25-2, who I know is up on the ridge. And, oh, I do actually manage to knock him out. I get that sweet, sweet tracking. We're up to almost 2,500 damage and almost 2,000 blocked. A very, very decent game. Not anything spectacular, but I was quite happy with this result so far. And we spot the T-25-2, or he gets spotted, and I'm actually able to just sneak a shot into him there as he crests. Like I said, this gun is fantastic for sniping. I think when I was playing this game, I actually have a vertical stabilizer on this tank, to uh, which is increasing my uh, accuracy even more, which, I mean, honestly, it's not the best equipment I could be running on this thing. I think I'm probably going to run the new uh, improved hardening so that I can increase my armor and uh, hit points, or increase my hit points rather, as well as uh, making my suspension system and everything have better health. And you can kind of see, I think I did it earlier in the, the replay too, I wiggled my turret a little bit. That's just to sort of try to minimize my um, weak spot, if if at all. And you can kind of use that in a lot of tanks. The, uh, the KV in this game is quite a good example of that. And even in War Thunder you can do it as well, where you just wiggle your turret and it will actually make your tank significantly harder to pen. It's very annoying when you actually run into like a tiger who, uh, like a tiger two who does that. And I uh, don't really like telling people to do it because I don't like running into it. So <laughs> there's your free tip for the day. And with that, we complete the battle with just about the same amount of damage done and blocked, 3,000 and 3,000. We will take a look at the post-battle results of that game after the next game featuring everybody's favorite rodent, the mouse. All right, and here we are on the airfield map, I believe is the name, in my mouse. Now, once again, I don't have the best equipment for my mouse at this point. I'm not sure what build I'm going to go for with the mouse. I know there's a lot of different ones you can go for, but I'm just, I got to kind of get the feel of how it plays, which, I mean, I already know how to play the mouse to, for the most part, but I just got to kind of see what I want to uh, tweak on this. But Besides the point, this time I am in a platoon with Captain Fagus and one of his buddies, and I am going to be spending a lot of time with his buddy David Killer over in the middle of the map, putting the pain on the enemies. This was a very close game, I have to say, and stay tuned because um, one of the bits towards the end is quite entertaining, and I think uh, if you play this game or just enjoy seeing stupidity you will uh you will enjoy this very much so as this is the mouse we have quite a bit of a drive ahead of us to try to get over into the area around let's see does my mouse cursor even show up no it doesn't but we're kind of heading into that area where the cs63 is that's sort of heavy tank lane but 
Like everybody knows, the mouse is not fast. She may be thick, but she is not quick. So I'm going to be spending a little bit of time driving there. But what do I love so much about the mouse, and why is this one of my favorite tanks? Well, I just don't know what there is that... Like, I don't know what it would take for someone not to like the mouse. I can understand maybe you don't like the play style, but just the tank itself is such a unique vehicle. It's just, I don't know how you could not like the mouse. I could understand not enjoying playing it, because yeah, it's slow. It's not the most fun vehicle to play all the time, but it's just so easy to love, and I absolutely adore the mouse, and it's why I ground this as my first tier 10. And bonk! <laughs> I was laughing pretty hard at that. I don't know if you caught it. That T110E5 just deleted the EBR, which was very, very nice and just an absolutely insane shot. I think he set him on fire and uh, killed him, but we have finally arrived and we're going to move up to help support our platoon mate in the Object 277 against the Type 5 Heavy and uh, what was the other tank on the corner there? I think it was some other heavy tank. I can't remember. Um, was it the CS-33? Oh, IS-4. Okay. So as you can see, I'm going to fluff some shots here because I'm still not quite used to uh, all the armor on the tier 10s that I have to face. Or the gun on the mouse for that matter. But I'm mostly just trying to bait shots and use my armor to protect my uh, platoon mate because that's what the mouse does best, honestly. Like, yeah, the mouse, especially with a lot of the buffs that it received, has a fantastic gun and it can do quite well at damaging tanks and ripping things apart. But what it really does best is just being a meat shield. And I kind of didn't cover him quite enough there, but I'm also trying to juggle not blocking him, so obviously there's only so much you can do. But now I'm loading the gold because I want to make sure that I can kill this Type 5 Heavy, and I think I probably should have gone for the turret, but you know, we've got the pen with the APCR to go through the flat plate there, so no real missed opportunities there. And I keep loading another gold round, and I just push forward because I see that I can get up behind that T110E5 and I can plant a shot right into his exposed buttocks, bounce a shot from an object 907 who is hiding, back up, let the 277 pop up, and T110E5 knocked out. Now at this point, we're sort of stuck here. I mean, we can definitely advance, but that 907 in the bushes is causing some significant issues. I believe he was back in the second line of bushes behind that one. He was a, he was a ways back. But he's in a position now where, I mean, I can advance, but it's a risky maneuver. But I make the decision after getting clicked on by artillery that I want to try to push up and root out that other T-1025 who's in the center of the map. So I wait for the stun to wear off. I'm kind of backing off. I see the T-110 up there. He's a two shot for me. So I decide, you know what, screw it. I'm a mouse, I've got the armor, I'm gonna go for it. And perfect, he gets hit once and gets put for a one shot. I take one hit from the 907, but I've got 3,000 hit points. I can spare a single hit. And I pop up and I fluff the shot into his cupola, but the STB pushes up and dies. <laughs> Unfortunately. And that T-110E5 just, uh, made a very brilliant play to try to ram a mouse, which just outstanding move to use, sir. And when I was playing this, I actually thought that I had he had rammed himself on me to death, but my platoon mate actually shot him as he was rushing me. And I quickly realized, okay, you know, this spot, not the best place to be sitting. I'm just going to keep getting shelled by that bat chat until I die, so I back up. But this TVP just sort of plants his ass right where I need to go, and I was like, you know what, I, I just gotta push my way out of here. Nearly flipped my mouse in the process, but no harm, no foul. We get out. The TVP doesn't seem to be too bothered by it. I think he realized, oh, I'm blocking the mouse, and uh, I immediately go to the aid of my platoon mate, who was, uh, at the time, asking for help because he was sort of stuck there because of the... Um, 907. I think there was another tank back in the bushes as well as that WZ-113, uh, rather, who's in the bushes. So I angle the armor against the 907, and I start pushing forward to go and help him while stunned. 
I'm thinking I might run a super heavy spall liner if you can on the mouse because I hate getting stunned and just lessening the stun is very, very helpful. But besides that, we get up on the corner and the WZ is spotted. I'm able to actually miss a shot there. I thought I snapped that first shot, but he backs up and I start taking hits from behind by this 1-2-1, but there's only so much I can really do here. I, I guess I maybe could have pushed that WZ-111, but I didn't really know it was in the bushes around there, so I I was just trying to play it safe, but I'm able to actually get a shot right yeah, there into the, eh, into the side of the WZ, and I'm just sort of angling against him. I see that 907 pushing, but I don't think he's actually going to make a move, so I take another yeah, shot, and it bounces off of the WZ. I probably should have loaded an APCR around here so that the next shot that I fired at that WZ would basically be a guaranteed pen, but I think I may have been trying to save some money there, and uh, regardless, my squad mate gets knocked out, and uh, there was really nothing I could do in that situation because he was just firmly planted behind the rocks. So now, I'm kind of still sitting here trying to wait that guy out and expecting the 907 to make a push, but I think he knew that the gorilla was back in the bushes. He may have gotten even hit by it. I wasn't sure. I didn't catch it during the replay. But, um, yeah, that WZ is planted over there. I'm very focused on trying to root that guy out because I know it would open up this whole flank, and he does actually end up backing up, and I try to snap a shot into the top, but it's just not to be. And I see the 121 hits me and the 907 is behind me. Now what I do here, a lot of people may have tried to turn their mouse all the way around, but what I do is I actually start reverse angling the mouse because with the mouse, your rear armor is extremely strong as well. And I'm, as you can see, I'm able to bounce some shots right off the butt of my tank, but the bat chat comes up, hits me for one, and then the one two one finally finds a spot that he can pen. I think it may have been me de-angling my turret there. And uh, now we go to the spectator camera where we uh, are watching this GWE 100. And there's nothing strange going on here, right? <laughs> now, obviously. So, at this point, all of us in the voice chat were sort of just like, what are, what are you doing? T110E5, why are, why are you ramming him? They're like, uh, we, I honestly, at this point, I just, I have no, I, I don't have any reason, rhyme or reason why this guy is doing this. That, that, um, GWE100 was supporting us that entire time. He's actually the one, I believe, who knocks out the WZ that was in the bush. He's playing exactly how he needs to be playing, but... Apparently, our lord and savior in the T110E5 did not like the way he was playing. So, he will spend the next approximately two or three minutes, I believe, just nudging and nudging and nudging and nudging our artillery. Which is just fantastic. Thankfully, it's a GWE-100. There's nothing a T110E5 can do. And I think at this point, he finally realizes, oh, okay, you know... I can't push him. And we thought, oh, you know, maybe he finally put his brain cap on and uh, is going to push forward. And yeah, it does seem like he's doing that. He's kind of going off on his own, but, you know, at least he's doing something of use and he's kind of pushing up. I was thinking maybe he was going to try to spot. I know I'm kind of stretching there a little bit. And then some stuff spot gets spotted on the map and he just stops. I honestly at this point thought he just went AFK. I was like, oh, okay, great. And I swapped back to just looking at a couple of the other vehicles. But, as you can see, let's see if we can go into a uh, free camera. Oh, the T110E5 has started to move once again. Our gorilla, unfortunately, makes the mistake of not making sure he's concealed behind the, um, the ridge, or the bush, rather, when he fires, gets spotted, and then kind of jumps off to his death. And the T-125 is on the move again. Here he goes. He's making a play. He's driving over here. All right. He's... I don't really know what he was doing at this point. And pay attention to the, uh, the mini-map because you'll see something pretty entertaining coming up. I don't know if this guy was trying to find the bat chat. Honestly, I don't think he was trying to do anything. I think he was just being an idiot. 
but he drives over into this position, which you can't get up there, and he realizes that and turns around. I definitely think he was probably trying to maybe hunt the artillery or something. I, I don't even know. He, you can really never tell with uh, incredibly intelligent players. But, you know, at this point, I think I was just ranting about the fact that, uh, you know, people like this should not be in Tier 10. But, <laughs> no, I wasn't really ranting. I was just wondering how he got to uh, Tier 10. And it was right around this time where you'll see our GWU 100. I thought he actually went and tried to suicide, which is kind of sad because, you know, artillery players do tend to do that. But he kind of drove off into the side there. And there it is. The bat chat tries to go after him. And they both die. <laughs> so he was actually able to kill the um, the bat chat, which well played to that GWE 100. He was a pretty good player. I mean, at least in this match. He did quite a good job. He helped us out a lot. And this was such a close game. This could have been... I think this probably could have been a win if this T110E5 had actually played the game instead of going and playing Kissy Kissy with the GWE 100. So he spots the T92 and gets killed by the gorilla. I, I'm assuming the T92 probably spotted him, or maybe not, I don't know. Regardless, he gets killed, and that was a defeat. But it was still a fun game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the post-battle results. First off, we have the Lerva match, which I have titled Fun Lerva Match. I'm very creative with my names, as you can tell. Uh, but we got, not only did we get a Confederate medal from that, which I actually didn't even notice that the first time I, <laughs> I played this, I also have a steel wall for blocking that 3,000 damage and a high caliber for getting that 3,021 damage to be exact. And it was also quite a chunk of credits that I earned, which was great because I was trying to grind credits at the time so that I could buy my mouse that was able to be featured for the next replay. But uh, only a second class. I have yet to get the mastery for my Lerva, I believe. But there's just so many of them out there. It's a very difficult tank. As you can see, a thousand base experience and I still didn't get it. So I've got my work cut out for me. But overall, a very fun match. And uh, the VK also, you can see, did quite well based off of the experience earned. He uh, definitely picked up the pace towards the end of the game there. Just wish he had pushed up a little bit sooner. We might have been able to win the match even easier. But very fun game. Let's take a look at the mouse next. And unfortunately, the mouse game was a defeat, so I got pretty much peanuts in terms of a reward for it, which really sucked because <laughs> I uh, did not have much money when I played this game. But uh, it was just such a fun game, and that little thing at the end with the T-175 was really the icing on the cake for just how hilarious playing the mouse can be. Um... Overall, I was able to get pretty high up on the team. David was able to get top of the team with the work he put in. I probably could have gotten right up there if I had just gotten one of that. I think if that shot had penned on that uh, WZ, I probably would have gotten second on the team. But overall, just a very, very fun game. I did not have a premium account at the time when I was playing this, so I lost 20 grand. But I was easily willing to trade that for almost 7,000 damage blocked. I just will always love playing the mouse. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this. I'll be doing some more of these in the future. I'm trying to pick up the pace on these a little bit because I just love doing these post commentaries. I really do enjoy playing World of Tanks still, and I've been getting into it a lot more lately as I just kind of get bored of constantly playing War Thunder. So I hope you guys don't mind it too much, and if you do, I apologize. Just wait until the War Thunder stuff gets uploaded. It will still be there, so... If you don't like these, just watch those, and I'll just keep doing what I want to do. But uh, it won't impact you. So thank you very much for liking, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.